This conversation picks up after the creation of a very simple chatbot, which, which I discussed uh, previously. As a, as a quick review, the uh, basic idea was to come in to uh, Hugging Face, use Verdeo uh, as the, uh, the mechanism for creating the chatbot rather than using something like Microsoft's bot framework. Uh, the, the code was uh, pretty simple, um, and this is just as an example of what uh, this sort of thing could look like. Uh, the main pieces are to import um, in the appropriate libraries, in this case uh, the, the Gradio uh, library, as well as the random uh, library, which is useful for, for random numbers. And so uh, what this does, whenever it runs, uh, we start uh, the interface up. Uh, and, and basically you type into uh, the UI uh, a message uh, and it uh, re basically returns back with this very simple string the message you typed in and then it mirrors that message reversing the order uh, and then also uh, randomly uh, returns back yes or no just as uh, a way of indicating that it's going on and, and um, uh, smart bot and so we'll give it a second and it says I'm um, just a simple bot so everything up to here is to the to the given period <coughs> everything after that uh, comes from what you typed in so this is uh, just a very brief uh, reminder of that capability the conversation that we're going to do now hinges more around taking that to the next level, uh, which would be in kind of that continuum um, of if you were uh, following uh, the, the approach that I've outlined uh, in the post to the, the, the course room of using uh, the, the, the hugging face um, uh, radio sort of approach as an alternative uh, to doing the Microsoft chat um, in a local development environment. And it is uh, potentially uh, a simpler approach, especially for those of you who may not be as strong uh, with traditional coding, especially uh, if Python is, is new to you, this is your first class where you've been asked to create a program, uh, this is likely a simpler way to go. So, uh, whenever we go in to Hugging Face, um, and uh, I've created an organization uh, for this particular uh, term that will likely change in the future, uh, and it's just as a way of sharing, making it easier uh, for you to do your submissions so that I can see them. Uh, but inside of that, uh, once you, you log in as yourself, uh, you'll come in. Uh, there's a link in the course room as well to join this organization. If you click on that, you can go into the actual organization. You can see the organization's card. Uh, that, that basically is just a way of telling you a bit about it. It's essentially a markdown file that you can take a look at. One of the things you can do then is now go in and create a space. And a space is uh, essentially a, a, uh, an environment where you can run code. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to continue kind of that same approach that I did before. I'm going to do my name, uh, call it demo, and then we'll call it a smarter uh, uh, bot or chat bot. And this is to basically be something that would be likely sufficient, um, and perhaps even more so than just sufficient, for that um, uh, assignment in uh, week three where you're asked to integrate um, a chatbot with an AI service. Now, this is a slightly different approach because you are using a model inside of the environment, but it's essentially doing the same thing, and that's the reason why I think it's, it's perfectly acceptable. So you'll notice I came in, I clicked on, on the, the templates here of Gradia. Uh, that's basically going to spin up a Docker image for us containing the stuff in it that we need. And I selected that I want to create a chatbot. Um, and you can make it uh, private, uh, public. It doesn't matter too terribly much. Um, and again, uh, just as a, a, a warning, if you're using stuff that came from someone else, give them credit. That's the whole point of the academic journey is that people are properly attributed for their, their efforts. So make sure that if you do borrow somebody's stuff, that you give them credit uh, in some form of citation. I'm going to go ahead and create that space, and it's going to create a very simple chatbot. That's uh, what the, this thing basically spins up. While it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over here to files. And there's a couple things that we'll need to do to make this work. One of the things we're going to use 
uh, is a library called a transformer. And this is a, a revolutionary type of technology that makes these large language models very useful and powerful. Uh, and without going into it too much, just know that it is really important. I went into the requirements.txt file. That controls in this environment what libraries are available. And what I'm, I'm going to do is include um, a, a new line. Uh, so I have to go in and edit it. Um, and then uh, I'll go ahead and, and copy in two things, uh, Torch and Transformers. Um, Torch is PyTorch. It's a, uh, a library for creating uh, basically these, these sort of um, uh, AIML sort of, of models. Uh, and that's essentially what it is. And you'll hear me use the word model quite a bit. A model is essentially just an abstract representation of the really complex thing that you're trying to approximate. So literally a model in the sense of like a scaled model that you might create of something. In this case, when we do things like large language models, that's approximating the human language. That's what it's intended to be, the language model that we use when we talk. Uh, so all I'm going to do in here is add a, a simple uh, comment that basically is going to be associated with a commit. We're committing directly into the main branch in this example rather than doing something more complicated and having to do a pull request. And, and it's just primarily because this is a really simple sort of uh, exercise that we're accomplishing. And it's perfectly acceptable in your environments that you do so as well. When you move into a more professional development environments, oftentimes there's complex branching strategies you need to follow, typically create a branch per feature and so on. Uh, but in this case, we're, we're about getting it done quickly. So uh, I'm going to just say that I'm adding uh, Torch and Transformers uh, to the requirements text file. And then do a commit down here at the very bottom and that pushed it across and that triggered a build. That's one of the cool things um, that uh, the Hugging Face does. It's got built-in CACD going on, continuous integration, continuous deployment. Whenever I make a change to the files, it picks it up and it, it does the appropriate thing and goes out and builds it. When we built this library or this, this simple environment, this, this um, uh, space, uh, they basically used a template to create it. It's pretty useful, but it's not exactly what we want to do. So we want to go through and make some uh, more changes to that as well. Uh, in particular, uh, a lot of this stuff we, we don't really, really care about too much, right? Because things like um, this uh, client interface, if you take a look at what they're doing with this example, is it's going through and basically taking a look at the the, the things that you've typed in, and it's going through and doing some completion uh, of, across it, trying to figure out what, what it is that would be coming next as far as the next tokens and so on. We really don't need all of that. Instead, what we basically need is just a function. Again, always remember to click edit because that's how it tells you tell that you want to actually do some editing. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that, and also we'll simplify um, a lot of this other stuff because we're not going to do any of this business down here um, uh, and we don't really care too much about this uh, things like top P and in fact we, we really only care about max tokens but we don't really even care too much about it I'll leave it there for the time being a key thing that has to happen is that this respond method needs to line up matching the signature of the thing uh, uh, that you're calling. So this very first parameter is the name of the, the method to invoke whenever somebody types in a new line. So since um, the only thing we have here is the, the max tokens um, along with uh, the system message, so we'll go ahead and leave those two things there. Uh, that means that we want to get rid of temperature and top P up here. Um, and we also don't care too much about this bit in the middle because it could actually make some things a little more complicated. So what this is doing is creating the, the array of items that are going to be passed into the model as a JSON dictionary. And so we're adding to it the, the message that's coming in here. Um, and so we're basically just kind of appending it to it. The system message comes in as well. A system message is going to be something where you give it instruction that is differentiated from the instructions that are coming from the user. So we're basically kind of putting some guardrails in place, if you will. Next, um, we need to go through and do a few more things. So we, 
we need to include in, we've already got uh, a couple uh, imports up here. We want to include in the transformers. Uh, uh, from transformers, we want to pull in pipeline. And a pipeline is a way of, of, of sending things in a particular order um, to um, a set of operations that you want to occur in the same way. In this case, they're pretty simple, uh, but they can be quite complex. And you can think of it very much like a pipeline, like an assembly line sort of thing where data flows through it in a predictable way. We tell it the type of, uh, of pipeline that we're giving it. In this case, it's going to be uh, text generation. We also then tell it the name of the model. Uh, and in this case, uh, we're going to be using uh, one from Microsoft. There, uh, there's another one that I had used beforehand. Um, and uh, it was this one up here. And I'm just popping this in for, for simplicity so I don't uh, do it badly. Um, this works, but it's the response is just really very bad. So um, moving that away, I'm also going to add a few more sort of comments or kind of debugging information in case we need it whenever things don't work, um, such as uh, telling it that we're starting things up, that we're defining the function so that we know what's going on uh, with the function. Um, and then basically the, the one piece here that is uh, kind of needed as well. We're defining our messages um, that are going to be passed in. So that's the payload that will actually go to the large language model uh, to do prediction or inference. Um, we also then want to actually do the calling. Um, and so here you can see that we're assigning response to an empty string. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And instead, to go through what I just did, added a little bit more diagnostics here. Uh, so that we can then see, okay, we're getting ready to send out for our, our response. We've got this method called chat model that we're going to be calling. Um, and that is the pipeline that we're creating. It's not actually a method per se, but it kind of is. You can treat it as one. We're going to pass to it that payload that we're constructing, get back a response. That response is pretty complicated, but we only really care about um, the generated text uh, that comes from it, and in particular, we care about um, what it was that the model gave us back. And with that, with any luck, when we commit this, um, we have a LM based chatbot. And a little bit more what um, Grammarly has to say. Uh, checking it in, and then we wait around and see if it's going to build and see what we did wrong. Um, and with that, I'll hit pause for a moment, and then we'll pick back up once it's done. And we're back. Took a little bit of time there, and it always does whenever you make that change. So take a quick look at what we just did. Um, there was one minor typo I need to go fix, uh, and I had to go fix whenever we were going in. In particular, I would left off, or I left a piece of code in place that shouldn't have been there. So uh, down here, there was a, a closing parentheses and a comma that was causing a little bit of grief, nothing, nothing uh, earth-shattering, and it tells you what, what's wrong. Um, and then also taking a look at the logs, it went through and pulled some stuff down for us. Um, gives us a warning message about some code that we're probably would want to take a look at over time. But for now, we can test our chatbot by asking it a simple question. Uh, this is a relatively slow model. It takes around 30 seconds to get back a response. That's in part because of the, the processors that we're running it. So while that's doing its thing, we can go take a look at something else. So if we click on settings, we can actually take a look around the, the space that we're using, or what it's configured to, we're set to the, the free tier of uh, basically getting the CPU for free along with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, and then there's lots of other options. You really don't need them uh, for what we'll be doing in the course with doing inference and so on. But it's, it's always nice to know. You don't really need persistent storage for this sort of thing either. You have the ability to restart the space if something is going on. Uh, that is, is not what you would like. Um, and then you can also do things like access your environment remotely using VS Code if you prefer to use a different editor. This editor is a little clunky. Uh, you might find your, yourself wanting to use something different. But different. Uh, so uh, I shouldn't have clicked off because it didn't, I forgot what I had asked. So let's do it again and give it a 
30 seconds. I guess it did actually finish. I just didn't see the response. I think I a minute here. So 26 seconds is what it took last time. Same question. Uh, and we will give this back uh, a reasonable answer. And it's, it's a pretty good idea. It's in something that simulates human um, uh, users and so on. And then one last question before we wrap this up. Um, who built you? Sometimes uh, these uh, chatbots are kind of cagey around these sort of questions. Uh, this one's not. It actually will tell you uh, that Microsoft uh, trained it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's give it a, another 10 seconds or so. Then we'll wrap this up. Sorry, this one took a little bit longer, but uh, it's a whole lot less time than it might take you to do all of the work associated with uh, standing up uh, an Azure subscription so that you can use uh, their APIs. Uh, so with that, uh, we have created uh, a, a relatively simple uh, chatbot. One of the things about this is that um, uh, I am very unhappy with the wrong answers. So this is an opportunity that you may want to think about for that week seven ad adaptive um, uh, chatbot uh, sort of experience. You're asked to create an adaptive user interface. Uh, chat is a user interface, so it's a, a viable way of doing it. It wasn't exactly what I was thinking when I, I wrote the assignment, but it does make sense, right? Because if we take a look at the actual, what it is that we're trying to accomplish is that write a, f a five to seven page paper in APA format that outlines the steps you took to create your solution. So that means you are creating a solution as well as writing about it. Discuss the ways that user experience can be improved using AI. Ensure your paper defines adaptive user interfaces, provides graph references and sources, and so on. Discuss intelligent user interfaces and their relationship to adaptive UIs, and, and so on. So the basic idea is to have an interface that changes based upon your uh, behavior. Um, so in this case, if you were to potentially run sentiment analysis across this, uh, which is just another type of pipeline, uh, and the code looks very, very similar, then you might know how to respond in a different way to the user, uh, maybe change the tone. Because one of the things that we can do um, uh, uh, we can, is basically try to control its tone, right? You know, grumpy chatbot. Are always answer questions as though you were a pirate, just to make it fun. Uh, and then you can ask it the last question. So you may want to think about being able to adjust the system message based upon the uh, sentiment, as an example. Lots of different ways that you could go with that assignment. The basic idea, though, would be do something different based upon something that you're able to programmatically determine using AI, ideally. Uh, and that's, um, in general, just a way of showing changes to the user experience based upon. Uh, and there we go. And uh, we hit the, the token limit there because it's a little short. But with that, we'll wrap this up. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. And I look forward to seeing submissions.